G'day and welcome to Black Opal Direct. Well, this is a cool session um, which yeah, aligns with Father's Day. So happy Father's Day to uh, all of you fathers all around the world that um, can show your appreciation to each other. But today we're gonna learn to cut an opal. So Saxon's gonna be learning and um, we're gonna firstly start with a piece of potch and we're gonna use this little oval template as a guide. So when you first start out with opal, it's all about shaping and getting a nice polish. So to start with, we're gonna try and get a nice shape and then we're gonna get a nice polish. And once we've done that, we're gonna to go to a piece of color and we're gonna do the same and see if we can cut a decent stone out. Sounds good, look forward to it. Awesome. So what we might first do is get this uh, piece of opal flat on the grinding wheel mm -hmm. and then we can drop, drop it, it. <laughs> and then we can uh, draw our little template on there so that you've got a guide uh, of how and where to um, to shape it. Sweet. Let's get All on right. to it. Let's do it. Today's not about cutting top gems. It's about learning to cut opal. I'm teaching my son the basics from the very, very beginning getting a nice shape, to having a nice dome, to getting a nice polish. So enjoy the journey. This was the last time I taught my son to we cut. We can't film with children because they just, they can't hold themselves together. But we can talk about teaching our children to cut opal. Now, it's a really good thing to be always How with them. How time flies. All right, so what side am I cutting first? So I would pick the, the cleanest looking side and then grind down on it until right. you get a nice clean piece of potch. Right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that work with kids or animals. Hang on. Alrighty, so let's just get a nice flat Nice flat surface. Is that all right? Yep, keep taking that all that sand out. Don't worry about, um, you're not losing any money. This is a piece of potch. So um, the potch is just uh, common opal. So you don't have to worry about whether it's actually wasting money. Roger that. Let's get a nice flat surface. Yeah, so to keep turning it that way and that way, get that sand spot out. I was actually really surprised at how natural my son was with his hands on the wheel. He must be born into it. That's it. You actually, your nimble fingers are actually natural. It's good. <laughs> Have a look at that surface. A little bit more. A little bit more. Mm. Looks good. Looks good to me. Have a camera. All right, we can draw a template on that. A template by no means should be used to cut a nice gem. If you were to use one, you would waste a lot of gem because you might not get exactly the full amount of color out of a stone by using one of these. But what it does do, it helps you with your shapes. Gives you a guideline of where to grind. Alrighty. Now remember, when you, when you cut an opal, you have to be looking at it from exactly straight down on top to be able to get the shape. All right. If you don't... Teaching someone to cut opal is not an overnight thing. It takes many years of experience. This is just the basics of cutting, shaping, and polishing. There's a whole lot more involved when it comes to opal, when it comes to color bars and patterns and brightnesses and darknesses and crystals and so many factors or facets, pardon the pun, to opal that it is really one of the most difficult gems on the planet to cut. You're doing it perfectly as you're looking straight down over the top of the stone that gives you a really good idea of how 
the shape looks. If you were to try and do it um, with your head further away, it's really hard to get an idea of the shape. Right, yeah. So you've got a fair bit of opal to take off, so you can actually push a fair bit harder if you wanted to. So now you're getting closer to the line. Whoops. Now you're getting closer to the line. Um, make sure that the line, the, the sides of the stone is not undercut. Make sure that it's on it's straight. straight or a little bit um, beveled. Uh. Becoming nimble with your hands is something that takes a long time to master and I used to watch my father do it over and over again and I'd just replicate it and replicate it until I got it down pat myself. It seems that Saxon's doing the same thing. Proud dad moment. So you're pretty close to the outline now and you've got a you've got a decent shape so we could probably go from there instead of going right down to the line it's just giving you a guide so now you can start smoothening out that back a little bit uh, bring the back up a little bit because it's all bumpy on the back and thick let me just do this a little bit more okay perfection that's the like it uh, very good uh, now it's time Hang on, hang on. What you want to do is you want to hold it this way because that's the thicker side and just work it until it gets down to the same thickness. All right. Yeah. There we go. Watch your knuckles on the wheel. <laughs> <laughs> it's really important to even up the back so that when you put it on a dop stick, you can make it a nice even shape so that the dome is not wonky and then you end up cutting a wonky stone that's out of shape. So it's really important to get that back nice and even all the way around. the back for now um, or yeah, take that, it down more. yeah take it down a little bit more you can round it a little bit more how Saxon's shaping the stone is exactly how I started out and it took me three years before I was allowed to cut anybody else's gem yeah, now do that uh, do the beveled edge again like you did before Good. that just takes the chip away are the chances of you chipping that back when you're taking it off the stick at the moment now you can roll that dome a little bit if you want to. Right. So same way you did the back beveled edge. Yeah, look at you. You're a natural. I like it. <laughs> That's great, Zach. That's probably enough for now. How's your shape? Are you happy with it? Not yet. Okay. It's a little bit skew up here. Yeah, exactly right. But it all looks pretty good for a dop stick. Um, I think you're pretty close, so yeah. we can get it on the dop stick. So the dopping process. All right, well, let's get your candle lit. All right. Beautiful. We always keep a little container of water um, close by 
just in case you uh, get wax stuck on your finger and it starts burning because if it does get stuck on your finger it will hurt a lot and you stick your finger straight in the cold water and cool it down that's reassuring yeah <laughs> so um because that's a big stone and that's a smaller dop stick, you're going, you're going to need to put a little bit more wax on that dop stick. Right. Now, I think I've taught you a few times before how to do this, haven't I? Yeah, you? I think I've learned a bit through osmosis as well. So, okay. Let's see how we go. That's plenty. Mm. All right, so you need to make it to a point mm -hmm. so that we've got enough wax above the. Oh, that'll drip now. Be careful, it'll burn you. I know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, push it down a little bit into too the stick. Much? Yeah, just a little right. bit. Yeah. You might find it break off. There's too much on above. It's a, it's a fine balance, but you've osmosis it very well. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get that uh, that stone. So from memory we have to heat up the stone a bit, don't we? Yep. So just a little bit over wave top. It th no, wave it through so it has time to cool. Yeah, like that. That's beautiful. Right. If you hold it in there too long, It'll that's when you crack. can yeah, you can break it. All right, now that's about to drip. It's about to drip. Ugh, dripped. <laughs> Here we go. All right, good. I need to push it too much further. <laughs> there we go. All right. Wet those fingers quickly. There we go. And now you can really push it underneath that stone. Mm -hmm. Get it on there and then... Push it where the stone... So touch the stone and the wax at the same time as you push it. Yep. So that it stays underneath the stone. That's it. Try and just get it level. Yeah, but you've got a lot of wax sitting on the outside edge as well, so you're running, Do it again. running out of... No, you don't have to. Let me show you. I'll wet my fingers and we can fix that from where it is, but yeah, there's a lot. It's a bit wonky. So I'll just heat up the stone, the wax again a little bit, and then we just push all of that wax underneath the stone like that. So you can see now there's no wax that's going to hit the wheel. Yep. Right. So you've got a nice... Nice top stick. And there's lots of wax there that will hold the stone. We can close that off. We're ready to shape it. Very good. Let's get back over to the wheel. To fine cutting. Alrighty. Now remember when you when you cut an opal you have to be looking at it from exactly straight down on top to be able to get the shape. All right. If you don't, if you don't look up top and you're standing a little bit further away, you can't see the shape and you won't get a good shape. All right. Okay. So let's work on getting that shape first. Beautiful. shape's coming along really well. It's a nice shape. Let's get that dome, start working on that dome. Yeah. So now, when you're holding the stone, you use one finger, at, one hand as a guide, which is that one, yep, and that one as your um, controlling. Right. Of turning the, turning the stone round and round, that's it. So 
So because you've got a lot of potch there, you can make a really nice high dome stone. So, and that's, that's really much more pleasing look when you get a nice high dome stone. I know I like high dome stones. You don't? I do. Oh, you do. Very nice. So there is a big flat spot on the top, so what I would do is concentrate on this area here. Not so much like that. I would do it more like on that corner and just go around like that for, for a fair while until it starts to show a little bit of dome starting to happen. Oh. Not too much on the edge more on the top because what you're trying to do is you're trying to bring the top of the dome down not the edges up if yeah. you know what I mean nice yeah that dome's really starting to form now you can see that's quite nice well done you're natural yeah very impressed all right so now all you've got to do is start doing some fine shaping, so make sure that your shape is, you're happy with it, and we can go to the next wheel. Wow. <laughs> really well. Beautiful, I reckon we're ready to rock and roll to the next one, dude. Really nice dome. Alright, so yep, you can do, you can do, now you're on the 600 grit. You can still do some fine shaping on this wheel, but you're mostly um, taking all the deeps and scratches from the last wheel out. I think you've seen me do that too many times. I think your osmosis theory is working. <laughs> the process of polishing an opal is quite a simple but complex process. You take a rough surface and you essentially polish it with finer and finer abrasives, getting it to work with all the colour patterns and domes without losing colour is the real trick. Alright, give it a dry on your arm and see how it looks. And this is the 1200 grit Nova wheel. So it's exactly the same process as the last wheel. You're just waiting to get that stone so it's nice, nice and shiny as a pre-polish. The process that I take when I polish an opal is I start out on a fine 500 grit hard diamond wheel and make my way to a 600 grit soft diamond Nova wheel and then I go to a 1200 diamond Nova wheel and then we go to the final polish, which is a felt wheel with cerium oxide, which is a glazier's polish for glass. Look, it's a tiny bit out of shape, but... I think from the first crack in a hot minute, it's not too bad. So can you see these, um, these little bumps and lumps? Mm -hmm. We'll find out in a minute when we go to polish it, but there might not be quite enough work done on that wheel to get all of that out on the polish. Alright. We'll find out as soon as we get on the polish. Cerium in, in the tray, not just water. And get it into every groove. Yeah, the, right there, there's still a light area. Yeah, right there. It's still light. Yeah. Mm. Ah. 
So because that, that stone is um, quite big, the grooves are, yeah, that's probably the best groove to choose. He knows what he's doing. Totally. So how do you reckon I did? I think you've done really well actually. You've got a nice polish, you've got a nice shape, and your polish is, oop, polish is all the way down the sides. So there's enough room there for you to do the back. I think you've done a pretty good job. What would you change? What do you reckon can be improved? Um, we could have probably trimmed in this sand on this side, mm -hmm. um, just to get it um, a little bit cleaner on the edges so it doesn't show up in the top mm -hmm. that's about all um, everything else is a really nice job does really the shape, nice done does the shape look a little bit off to you only because of that sand spot yeah right here but that's around about it but anything here like there's a little bump there but we can shape that on when we're doing the back we can actually adjust the shape slightly so right. you've done a good job Sorry. Well done. In the coming weeks, you'll see Saxon cut another piece of opal, but with colour this time. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.